Can you start by telling us your name and a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Um, my name is Brianna Jonak, and I'm from Arkansas in the United States, and I go to the University of Arkansas, and I'm an anthropology major. And you've been to Oroville and Finhorn, and these are two eco-villages that are trying to go and help in the unification and uh, evolution of the human species? Yes. I, I'm i doing a year-long semester, or two semesters. One was in Oroville in India last semester, and the other this semester is the spring semester of 2008. Last semester was fall of 2007. This semester I'm in Fintorn in Scotland, and they're both eco-villages. Can you tell us a little bit about the social, ecological, and spiritual aspects of these communities and why you feel um, they're either important or not important to the uh, transformation of our civilization? Yes. <laughs> I... Hmm. I think one of the best things spiritually, ecologically, and socially with Oroville and Findhorn is that they're both creating safe spaces for people to go there and learn together but be with the earth together and create a, com a communal society. They're both small scale but this works for both of them and it, it works better for humanity in small scale anyway because there's less people to manage. So spiritually Oroville and Fintorn are based on different aspects. Oroville is more based on the integral yoga of Shri Aurobindo and the mother and Fintorn is more based on nature spirits and um, the advice of Eileen Caddy and Peter Caddy and um, Dorothy McLean. Um, they're both focused on finding your own spirituality though of using the individual as a catalyst for finding their own path to spirituality. And how does that play into the larger realm of the social and ecological element of the communities? Um, the good thing about this is, is that because it's an encouragement of the individual, individual to find their own path, mm -hmm. but there's still the communal aspect of we're here together learning together. So there's an I, but there's also a we. And there's a focus first on that individual to really develop, but also on the individuals around them to be a supporting network of people. Um, and I think that's really what's needed for growth in any capacity. Um, How do you think these communities can help the rest of the world, either by using it as a blueprint or going there and learning and taking it to the outside? How are these areas and these communities that are coming up um, how are they pivotal points for humanity? They're pivotal points because they're like an experiment of kind of taking the learning that we've already had and putting into a smaller group context but taking in a more holistic approach to life, meaning the spiritual, ecological, and social aspects all together in one and with the knowledge that they're there for that certain purpose. So they're trying to figure out how they can be communal. And there's there's so many flaws to this in that it always starts with you and trying to overcome your individual flaws to develop into a better whole with everyone else. Do you think it could be used on a mass scale with the rest of people who aren't necessarily into you know the spiritual elements? Yeah, I do. I think... Well, I think the future is going to hold that humanity is going to have to break down into a lot smaller sectors. But I also think that the approaches that they use and like the facilitation techniques that are used to create safe spaces, um, especially here in Fintorn that we've seen, is that the approach is not... The, the main focus, it is the individual, but it's not because the main focus is helping you heal so that you can be a better part of the whole. And building tolerance of everyone involved so that we can all work together to foster greater communication and greater progress. 
You say safe space. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that and, and, and define what a safe space actually is? Yeah. And what it means to create safe space? Yeah. Safe space means that everyone involved in that space... Um, that has space, a, like in the room? In the room, yeah. Okay, say so like for a room, or we'll use for a room, but it can be, as an example, on a, a wider community scale, so like, like I would say Orville and Fintorn are, are like safe spaces. But say in a room, all the people in the room are acknowledging that they want to hear from each individual person and they want to hear honestly exactly who they are at that moment in time and that's what they're accepting of them. It doesn't mean they have to be anything else. They're only there in that moment of time and that's who they are and we're accepting of that. It doesn't matter if they're angry, if they're in pain, if they are happy, you know, whatever they are feeling and that everybody in the room accepts them for that feeling, that's creating a safe space. That's letting people heal and being able to communicate with other people on that level. Ecologically? Yeah, if you'd be willing to go into the ecological elements of these communities. Yeah, definitely. And how they, how they live and interact with, um, you know, just their, their natural surroundings. Yeah. Definitely. There's a deeper respect, both in Oroville and in Fintorn, for the natural environment. Because they're also taking into that point of view of, we obviously need the earth and we need the land around us to foster our own growth. And there's so much that we can learn from that land and the growth there, because we're not the only, we're not the only beings there. And so being in respect of that and also knowing that we need to nurture it however we can, um, that's kind of what I find like ecologically kind of nurturing those environments and taking the learning that we've developed like so far of ecological systems and of the environment and growth and how to grow things and really letting it foster itself but kind of helping it get along like planting trees like Orville of course was like desert land and they planted millions of trees you know and that place is lush and beautiful now it is so gorgeous and Fintorn is um kind of the same, I mean, not as big a reconstruction effort as Orville was, but it's like a beautiful space where people also really live in respect of the land around them and try to foster that respect. Do you think there is potential for people to adopt this? Because a lot of this sounds very, very good, but it might not necessarily fit into contemporary society's worldview. Um, so how do, you, how do you approach spreading this concept and these concepts to a wider audience um, without turning them off to the idea? Yeah. That's a good question. I really <laughs> loved Joanna Macy's work and her reconnection work, and I thought that was a really valuable approach in reconnecting people with themselves and with the earth, because she starts out with gratitude. And if you have gratitude for everything around you at every moment, you're going to be the happiest person around. <laughs> mm -hmm. So starting out with that, and then honoring the pain that you've actually had in life, you know, and not ignoring it, but living with it, and noticing what made you actually in pain, like what was actually paining you you know, and trying to heal that. And then after you've honored that pain, you see with new eyes. And that's looking at everything around you in a new light of both gratitude and what it took for you to be alive in that gratitude and what it took for you to actually be alive because that also took suffering, you know. And seeing that everything, that you're not the only person that had that gratitude or was pained by it, that life is struggle. And seeing that we can help that struggle through love and through fostering it and through not being afraid. <laughs> and then the last step in that is, oh, taking action. <laughs> so really being instilled in yourself with your incentives for being an I, but also being a we.